Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran New York City jazz singer Rosanna Vitro. We spoke with her in that afterglow the first day after the 2021 presidential inauguration, full of hope and vigor for the future. She talked about her latest 2020 project that brought her 1984 vinyl recording, Listen Here, for the first time to streaming and CD formats. Featuring an all-star lineup led by Kenny Barron, Buster Williams, and Arnett Cobb. Originally from Hot Springs, Arkansas, she has gone on to see the world and do some wonderful work. Get to know her and dig this interview. But thank it you is. for taking it's a minute out. It's a new day. Yes, yeah, it's a new day. Totally. So it, it, it feels good. Whatever people's uh, feelings are, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a new day and a new time and new hopes for um, getting rid of COVID and yeah. gigging. You know, I just did... Uh, my first serious gig back with Kenny Werner um, on the 16th at a, a, a re- very cool place in Brooklyn called the Soapbox Gallery. And a uh, wonderful sculptor, Jimmy Green- Greenfield, owns it. And lots and lots of jazz cats play down there. And it's usually just two people because of the COVID. Sometimes it's a whole group. My friend Paul Jost goes in there actually with a trio, so all the guys must be pretty safe now, and I, I know the band really well. But um, it was such a cool gig, and it streams, right? You can um, catch his streams, and it was Kenny and I. I thought we were going to explode. We had so much fun. We just tore it up. We just howled the whole night, you know, just playing our we, – we had really just what was supposed to be one set – but we went on an extra 30 minutes because we were just having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I think that's probably going to be the way things are going to be once things kind of come back to life, you know? Well, musicians, um, you know, thank, thank you, Joe, for what, what you're doing, bringing the music to people. I, you know, I really I had a chance to check out your, your site and your playlist and, you know, what you like to play, who you've been interviewing, your depth in, into the music. You know, it's so um, appreciated because, of course, in jazz, we've always been sort of a, um, you know, a, a, a small group, let's say, compared to what the Grammy people decide to present. Yeah, <laughs> through that. You know, so um, it's really appreciated what you're doing and such uh, quality that, that, that you're playing and people that you're interviewing. I'm honored to be here today. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about your brand new CD coming out, obviously, during a pandemic. Uh, listen here. <laughs> talk to me about any feelings of it coming out during this time and kind of where you're at with it. Well, you know what? I am, for me, I'm someone that's, that's made, you know, 14 records and with all kinds of themes and great people and had a wonderful career teaching and touring as a jazz ambassador and all kinds of uh, ins and outs in my life, and I started out in, um, you know, Houston, Texas, with the great Arnett Cobb, was one of the first great players to introduce me to jazz. What's great is Listen Here was the very first record that I made in 1982 in New York City after I had made my move from Texas to New York, and I had heard the Kenny Barron trio, Kenny Barron, Buster Williams, and Ben Riley. And I had thought, wow, now that was the smoothest trio I've ever heard. I mean, it was like cream. And I thought, geez, man, I, I, I was just so thrilled with just hearing all the musicians in New York, even though Texas, believe me, is full of great jazz musicians. And I had had a, a good gig in Texas at a place called The Green Room where Oscar Peterson had set in with me and Bill Evans had come to my gig. And all kinds of wonderful things had happened to me that was just, I don't know, some kind of luck or miracle, <laughs> you know. Okay. And I was gun ho And so there was an old judge that, that loved me and loved Bill Evans and um, sent me $5,000 to make my first record. And I thought, I'm going to call the Kenny Barron Trio and I'm going to fly Arnett Cobb up to New York. And I was Fred Hirsch's roommate <laughs> at the time, and Fred and I used to do gigs all the time, as well as Kenny Werner and I. So Fred did the arrangements. I brought in uh, Bliss Rodriguez and Scott Hardy, who were guitar and pianists that were in my original group in Texas. And Daduka Dafonseca was on percussion. 
And it was just the greatest thing in the world. And I was, I mean, it was the beginning of my career, and I was on top of the world. Well, we go, what, 38 years, almost 40 years later now. What I'm looking at now, deciding, say, maybe the last 10 years of my life or 20 years of my life, what, however long I'm going to live. And I said, gee, Listen Here was never released as streaming or a CD. And I am. I have a couple of great records in the can, and I'm always thinking of different things to do. But I thought, I, I looking forward, but looking back and being grateful is the space I'm in. And meeting, uh, you know, a lot of DJs that have never heard of me. You know, a lot of people that played my music all the time are have now gone to jazz heaven. <laughs> And um, are retired or whatever, and so I thought, well, this is this will just kick off in the middle of this COVID. I'm just gonna this is gonna be my first salvo and toe in the water after being dormant for a couple of years. I think my last release was in 2017, kind of a rock and blues jazz record I uh, titled "Tell Me the Truth" after a John Hendrix song that I just loved. You know, it, it's sort of the the kickoff for my optimism for what can be and it's a i'm proud of this record you know i'm the music is great the the playing is wonderful i was singing good and feeling good and and i don't know on top of the world yeah i was you know i had my daughter in 84 so you know life was um was a lucky girl (laughs) right on (laughs) well what is it now you know now that we're not in in the throws of live music and I mean you know you just had a gig but like there's been an absence of it what when you've been reflected during this time what do you what do you like the best about being a performer I think all of us um, all musicians and we miss creating with other wonderful musicians we we miss that that conversation that we have on stage Whatever our concept is, whether it's improvising with lyrics, which is one thing I, I love to do a lot. It's a, the course I've created this, this semester for the uh, California Jazz Institute. Or you're scatting, or you're just singing the story. I mean, um, I miss the conversation with all the great musicians that, and, and the spontaneity that jazz brings. You keep improving, you keep writing, you keep learning. And but then that interaction and the audience, people writing to me saying, "Oh man, thanks for singing, love you madly for me." That was like, "Oh man, you know, of course that's that's what we miss. You know, everybody's hungry to play. We just feel it's. I have never gone so long without singing as I have this year, and the level of patience just to exist to deal with all the adversity." that we've gone through with this pandemic has been terrible and, you know, really um, understanding, like, what what is it that some people get a mild case, other people, they get it, boom, they're gone. And like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, just the evolution of knowing um, how many strains are there. Uh, you know, because some people are like, meh, it was like a cold. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you hear right. the same thing, right? Sure, but, yeah. You know, the New York, it's like a ghost town. It's so weird. Here we are, just one of the hubs of jazz in the world. And when I drove to Brooklyn the other night from South Orange, South Orange is like the closest train train stop in Jersey. We're just really close to Manhattan. And then dr- you have to drive through Manhattan to get to Brooklyn. And to see everything look like a ghost town so weird and then this venue is sort of in, an, in a little bit of an industrial uh, area where in New York a lot of times in buildings lofts or you know people get a, a whole floor of a building or a whole downstairs and and then they create uh, what they want to create there and so it was um, you know just a little just a doorway that says so box gallery <laughs> And you go in, and then you go into this this world that Jimmy Greenfield created, 
where jazz musicians are just coming in there and playing all the time. He's got a great piano, a great video set up. He's got huge pieces of sculptures that he's created in the back. Um, just wonderful pieces. And I thought, wow, it, you know, we always laugh at that how if you want to make a million dollars as a jazz musician, you'd have to start with close to that. <laughs> Yeah. I thought that how a sculptor who he imagined having his gig and then presenting jazz. I was like, this guy is really creative and um, just so dear what he's what he's doing for our community. <laughs> Without a doubt, everyone has a perception of you: your family, your friends, your fans. That you're living your life. Who do you think you are? I think that I am a very loving, giving person who is exuberant um, about singing and music and cooking and helping. I'm a grandmother now. Um, I love my little grandson. He just I chase him around on my knees. I play lion. <laughs> I'm just doing... You know, I'm somebody that loves life. I'm probably going to flame out like... Um, one of those sparklers, you know, on the 4th of July, I'll just go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm high energy. I love to help people. I, I you know, I come from a very uh, poor family in, in Arkansas where, you know, it was either get on the bus and go somewhere to get out of town or you going to stay there and, you know, marry somebody and have 10 kids. And I said, no, 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 I'm. I knew I was going to be a singer from when I was four years old. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be a singer. And that's what I did. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, thank you for opening up about what's going on with your album and what's going on these days in your life and music. I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate getting to know who you are. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Hot Springs, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Rosanna for her time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time. Go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.